In this video, we're gonna break down this one point perspective kitchen shot that I recently took. I'm gonna walk you through my on-site thought process and shooting steps, as well as take you through the editing process using Lightroom and Photoshop. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Matthew. I am an interiors and architecture photographer based in Kansas City. Well, if you are a regular subscriber to the channel, you may have recently heard me talk and hint about the new tutorial series that I was doing with Mike Kelly. And lo and behold, here we are, it is now live. If you saw the last video that I posted, it was a small little excerpt just from the sales and marketing video. Uh, we've got a bunch of different topics that we discuss as far as the business side of running an architecture photography business. Do we cover every single aspect? No, but we cover a lot when it comes to not only sales and marketing, but uh, copyright and infringements that you are more than likely gonna run up against, obtaining new clients, licensing your photography. We even discuss scenarios where if or when one of your photos or videos happens to go viral. Contracts, finance, there is quite a bit that we do go over and it's all about the business side of it. There's a lot of information and videos and tutorials out there about how to shoot uh, beautiful architecture photos, but what we wanted to do was put something together to help photographers run the business side of it. If you're interested in learning more about the video series, make sure to check the link in the description. It should be the first one you come across. Okay, so let's get into breaking down this photo. Now, much like a lot of the other photos that I have shown, no, this photo specifically is not gonna win any awards. It's not breathtaking by any stretch of the imagination. I, I do think it's a very nice photo. I think it showcases aspects of this kitchen very well. But the reason I wanted to showcase and break down this uh, image specifically because there was a lot of just a lot of different moving pieces in order to put it together not only on site but uh, as far as the edit goes as well so let's break down the on site part of this first and in order to do that let's first look at kind of a diagram or a blueprint of this uh, this floor plan so here's the floor plan yes the first thing you're going to notice is that the the wording is all backwards i was able to get the floor plan uh, from the builder, but to pull back the curtain a little bit, these houses that I'm photographing here, it's a row of townhomes close to downtown Kansas City. So uh, one's right next to each other. They're very similar floor plans, but they're reversed. So that's why I had to take this one and basically just flip it. So that's why all the wording's backwards. Okay, so let's take a look here. First thing I knew that I wanted to do, I wanted to get this one point perspective kitchen shot. And where I was going to place the camera was, if we zoom in here, was right here looking down this galleyway now if you're familiar at all with floor plans and you've seen any of my videos when it comes to lighting you'll notice a problem right away this window right here so as not to repeat myself a ton generally as a rule of thumb whatever direction you're shooting you don't want a big light source being at your back so with that being said it's pretty obvious i needed to get rid of all the light try my best to block most if not all the light coming from this window when i first did a walkthrough of this uh, property specifically it was pretty obvious in this shot that i wanted to take i really wanted to showcase the natural light coming from left to right i wanted all of the light all of the natural light filling the space to only be coming from the sliding glass doors which are right here but to really make sure i wasn't getting any light whatsoever coming from the other direction which would be from this hall space i also blocked off using these heavy duty super fancy trash bags blocking off the light here from the front door and any tiny hints of light that would be coming from the front uh, study or office in this shot i used my 24 millimeter tilt shift lens now relative to how i ideally would have loved to shoot this i actually probably would have loved to shoot this maybe more at 30 millimeters, maybe 35 millimeters. But as you can see from the diagram and the, the video, the camera was pretty much backed up against the wall. So unless I wanted to stick the camera out the window, which I couldn't because the window outside was way too high off the ground, this was about as far back as I could get. So as you analyze this photo, you'll notice that the camera is not placed dead center between the counter on the right and the island on the left. We're kind of actually scooted a little bit further left in order to see 
the oven there on the right. If I would have scooted the camera maybe dead center, I would have, yeah, I would have gained more of the cabinetry there on the left, but that oven face, the front of the oven would have become thinner and thinner and thinner and become almost profile. So that's why I nudged the camera a little bit to the left off center, but then shifted the camera lens back to the right a little bit in order to get everything that I wanted. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of the space and let you in on some of the reasons why I took the photo the way I did. So let's go into Lightroom now and I'll walk you through some of the things that I do and, and tweak and adjust to the raw files before I even send them over to uh, Photoshop. Now I already made the adjustments, I screen recorded the whole thing, but I'm gonna double the speed here so we kind of go through this fairly quick. First thing I do is, um, as you can tell here, I, I have different brightness levels of just using natural light and then I even have some where I add in um, just a little bit of flash, uh, softbox light as well. I set the color profile to neutral. I make sure my white balance is correct on all of my exposures, and I make sure that my horizontals and verticals are correct as well. I've seen cabinets and countertops installed, so I'm pretty sure as meticulous as some of these installers are, the counters and uh, cabinetry are good reference points to, to double check your, your lines. After that, I generally do some highlights and shadows adjustments. I take down the highlights to taste. Sometimes that's negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, and then I give the shadows a little bit of a boost there. I add some of that contrast back in using clarity. And then a little additional trick I do is I know that the mid-tones, people really love bright mid-tones. Well, there's an adjustment that you can do. Uh, it's oddly enough in the color grading section of uh, Lightroom, but yeah, that'll give your mid-tones a nice boost on your uh, your exposures as well. I copy that and paste the settings onto my other exposures uh, using natural light. Now that I've introduced some flash, again, I want to make sure that my white balance is correct here. I can tell it's a little off, but I use the white uh, oven hood as a, as a reference point. I typically will not do as harsh of highlight and, sh highlight and shadow adjustment to f exposures using flash, but my clarity is the same. I do bump up the vibrance and the saturation. You've got colors there for a reason. You might as well give them a nice boost uh, because camera neutral profiles do kind of flatten the colors a bit. So you want to raise them back up. Of all the exposures that I'm going to use for sure, I do mark them uh, with a color, in this case purple. These exposures specifically are for grabbing some of that detail from the countertops and the floors. And you'll see what I do with them here in a bit uh, in Photoshop. <laughs> I accidentally took some photos of myself while I'm double checking my exposures. And yeah, I believe that is it. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> this last port. Oh, yeah, last exposure there for, again, the countertops. As you can see, we're getting more detail the countertops in these exposures because simply from bouncing the light up into the ceiling and it's bringing out some more detail in uh, the wood flooring behind the island. All right, I highlight all the exposures that I'm gonna use and for the edit in Photoshop and let's, uh, let's take it into there and see what I did. Okay, so we are in Photoshop now and just to give you a little bit of a hint, this is the final product and this is the initial one. This is kind of what I use as my, my base and as you can see here at the bottom, that's what I labeled it, base. Um, but yeah, I will walk you through the steps I did in Photoshop in order to take it to a photo that looks like this. All right, next up, what I did was add an exposure that I used uh, called Darker Base. This is the same exact shot, but just slightly darker. And the reason I added it, as you can see here with the uh, gradient mask, was just to kind of even things out. The right side was fairly bright, but the left here, in my taste, was borderline overexposed. So I brought in the darker one and just subtly blended that in using the gradient tool. Okay, next up was adding some of this exposure in where I was giving a little bit of natural light boost via the softbox uh, light onto the counter and the stove and the, the oven that was kind not getting lost in shadow, but I basically wanted to bring it back up. So as you can see here, this is the exposure itself uh, with me over there with the softbox. And then I brought it in using just normal mode. I didn't use lighten, um, just kind of blended some of that exposure back in there. Uh, I was really kind of, I used a big soft brush and I didn't go 100% with it, but just enough to kind of, again, give it a little bit of even 
boost, but without it looking too fake and flashy. Next up was to fix a little bit of a problem that I was noticing from just the completely natural exposures, which was the color of the cabinets. Now, as beautiful as the natural light exposures are, the one thing I was noticing is that it was kind of washing out some of the color tones on the cabinets. The cabinets, they were kind of this muted olive color. They definitely were not as muted as you'll see, say roughly here. They were getting a little bit of a little bit washed out. So I took an exposure when I brought where I brought the ambient level or brought the ambient light down just a little bit, but then gave it that boost back up using the softbox. As you can tell, yeah, the, the shadows are a little bit harsher, but there's still some softness there. But the nice thing is, is that it brings back some of that rich color. It's a little bit more even now. Again, did a real subtle painting job here, just enough to kind of tame some of the issues I was having before with the washed out color tones in the cabinets and bring them back with the flash exposure. Then oddly enough, I took the natural light exposure put one of those exposures back on top and then change this blend mode to luminosity to bring back again some of those natural highlights and shadows. So I'm retaining the color tone of the flash layer, but bringing back some of the natural highlights and shadows from the natural light layer. There's a before and after with the luminosity layer added back in. Next up, I'm gonna show you something that I thought I would end up using in the edit, but I decided not to. And it was this exposure I took specifically to light up the cabinets here on the back. When I was there on site, I noticed that, yeah, these cabinets are kind of getting lost in shadow. They're a little bit in the, the background, so to speak. But since these cabinets stick out, they're casting a pretty big shadow on the ones back there. What I thought I was going to do was I took this exposure with the softbox here to bring some of that light back up. But as I was looking at it, it was kind of getting rid of some of the drama that was there from just the natural light exposure. So. What an exposure that I thought I was going to use, I just decided not to. So it's really not used in the edit at all. All right, next up is the exposures I took to bring back some of the detail and the countertop. Another issue that comes up sometimes using natural light exposures is you don't get as much of the countertop detail as, as you'd like, or at least that I would like. So in this instance on site, I popped a flash into the ceiling to turn the ceiling into a gigantic softbox, so to speak, and really just shine it directly on the countertop to bring out some of that detail. And there it is. But if I painted this layer 100% onto the other one, it would look completely fake because obviously there is some sheen there is some shine to the countertop so you're going to get some reflections there so what you have to try to do is find some sort of balance to bring that detail back but not make it look too fake next up is the exposure that i shot just to bring back some of the detail in the flooring this is with the layer at normal blend mode but what i ended up doing was changing it to lighten and just real subtly again you know, i'm probably overusing this word but subtly bring back some of that detail and lift some of the shadows a little bit with the flash. So that's pretty much it as far as combining some of the different type of exposures together. So I take that, I smash it all in to combine that all into one brand new layer that as you can see here, this layer one. And then within this layer itself, I start doing a little bit of the cleanup being some sensor, some dust spots, some weird reflections that you see, as you can probably tell here, getting some weird reflection here on the backsplash, and I, I'm pretty sure that's a sensor spot, some sensor dust. So I clean that up. There's another one over there. So that gets cleaned up. Next up is a layer that I use to really make sure I nail down the accurate colors of the cabinets. It's a real subtle issue, but I'm gonna zoom here. You may notice this, and you may come across this sometimes too, is that color tones will vary depending upon the type of light that's hitting them. I was running into that issue here with these back cabinets. This, as far as the natural light hitting this part of the cabinetry, yeah, that was the accurate color tone, but we're kind of getting some different colors here in the shadow portion of it. Well, all I had to do was just sample the color tone here from uh, the cabinets in this space, and then just used a brush with that color and kind of painted some of that back in. But as you can tell here in the opacity section of it, I didn't go 100% with this. All I was really trying to do was kind of just tame some of those rogue colors that were popping up in the cabinetry. And if you really wanna make sure you get almost that borderline render look, you could go 100% with this. Actually, you know what, now that I mentioned it, let's turn this, it was at 32, let's turn this up to 100% and see what that looks like. See, look what it does here to the shadows 
uh, not part of the cabinetry. Now, although it's the technically the same color, it looks weird. It looks off. And even here, too, as well. It's the same color, technically, but it just looks weird now that it's it's basically perfect. That's the weird thing. Now that it's perfect, it looks weird. So I'll dial it back just like I did in the edit and go back to where are we at? 32%. It helps tame some of those issues that we were dealing with, but doesn't get rid of them completely so as to throw a red flag. Next up is to remove some of the items that I just deemed completely unnecessary. They really weren't adding anything to them and I don't think they're going to take anything away from the photos if we end up taking them away. The things being this outlet here on the right side and then these recess lights here up top. Get rid of those. The other thing you have to be aware of whenever you're removing an item, if there's a reflection of said item, make sure to get rid of it in the reflection as well. I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. I have made this mistake plenty of times. The outlet is here on the right side, but again, because there's a little bit of a reflection in the countertop, you can see the outlet there in the countertop. So if you're gonna get rid of the item itself, make sure you get it, get rid of its reflection too. Next up, I combine everything back into another layer for me to do more adjustments. This step's probably unnecessary, but I don't know, it's habit. That's just what I do. Next step I do on after that is to make sure I'm getting rid of any colors that I consider rogue. You may have heard me talk about this before. Any weird magentas stray greens, blues, things that are kind of muddying up or dirtying up the photo that I don't want in there. I merge that all together onto another layer and then for my final touches, my finishing touches, my cherry on top, I bring that exposure into Color FX Pro 4, which adds a little bit of what they call pro contrast and detail extraction. And I'm really, really careful with this, not to overdo it, but also just to give it that little extra, like I said, cherry on top look. This is before and after, before and after. The nice thing is, as you can see here, it really brings out that detail in the backsplash and countertops. Overall, it does add some really specific and fine-tuned contrast as well as some, uh, some sharpening. But in my opinion, this brightens the overall image a little bit too much. So then I try to bring everything down, specifically the, dar the darker side of it, like, these countertops are, are black, but now because of this Color Effects Pro filter, it's made them look a little bit gray. So I use a curves adjustment layer and bring everything back down to the way I want to bring back some of that mood and drama, combine that all into an image and voila, there we go. There is the final image that I deliver to my client. Guys, I will admit every time I record these kinds of videos, I feel like I'm rambling. So. If that's the case on this one, I sincerely apologize, but I actually do get pretty good feedback. You guys love me picking apart these photos. Hopefully you've learned some new tips and tricks and things that you can implement on your next shoot or editing session. If you got anything out of the video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Uh, like I mentioned at the start, if you're interested in our video tutorial series about the business side of architectural photography, if you're on the early stages of your architectural photography career or dealing with a part of your career that you haven't dealt with before in a very, very long time, it might be worth checking out. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, maybe consider subscribing. If you'd like to, you're also welcome to follow me on Instagram at Matthew A. Photo. You can throw me comments, suggestions, or questions there, as well as the comments below this video too. That'll do it for this one. Again, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. We'll see you on the next one.